No, I, I'm happy he was willing to do it. If we couldn't yeah. do it, we still would have been able to do it. And this well, way, Ron, Ron got back, so it's great. I wouldn't mind, Hello, folks. But nobody's okay, we are live. Okay, go. Oh, we're live. Yeah. Hello, we're all live, folks. We're doing Stout Sunday. Here we are. Uh, get this cap off. Um, I'm in Louisiana. We're doing uh, Stouts, obviously. Stout Sunday is presented by the uh, International Beer Review Guild. My hair is crazy because of the cap. <laughs> International Beer Review Guild, the uh, Beer Talk, and uh, the Beer Coalition Chat. And we're doing Stouts. And uh, we have from Arkansas, Jeremy. Hello, from guys. Kansas, we have the Whiskey Scout. Today, the Hello. Stout Scout. The Stout Scout. <laughs> this morning mm -hmm. uh, and we have from brooklyn new york city michael komaroff hello everybody and uh well what do y'all have go jeremy you up all right today i have one i have not tried but i've heard a lot about uh north coast brewing it's the uh, old rasputin russian imperial oh. stout it's an awesome beer yeah, I've heard it was. It's uh. Let me. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna go get that. I got that up in the fridge, and I debated between that one and the one I was gonna do. I'll do that one because I never had it either. Okay, cool. We'll be doing that's that. Later. That's a classic. Yeah. It's a Russian Imperial Stout, uh, nine percent ABV, seventy-five uh, IBUs. It's a uh, produces in the tradition of eighteenth-century English brewers who supplied the courts of Russia. <clears throat> Catherine the Great, O Rasputin, seems to develop a cult following wherever it goes. It's a rich, intense brew with big, complex flavors and warm finish. And uh, yeah, I'll try this one out. And uh, I know a lot of people have uh, gave a good review, so I may see what I think of it. All right, I had to turn around. I had the light going the wrong way. Um, <laughs> what I have <laughs> is Nola. Nola Irish Channel Stout. This is from New Orleans Lager and Ale Company, founded about 12 years ago, uh, 11 years ago. And this is from, right, I, I was showing photos from the Mississippi River the other day. This place is right across the street from the Mississippi River. It's 6.8% alcohol. I went on a tour there once. It says, Les le bon Pierre Versaire. Let the let the good beer flow. American stout starts with a serious. Well, I'm sorry, with a strong espresso front end. Finishes with a touch of baker's chocolate and is balanced with a crisp bitterness produced by American hops and roasted barley. Smooth, rich, and uh, it's named after an area of New Orleans called the Irish Channel. And I ate some red beans and rice at a, in the Irish Channel one time at a man named. His name was Nick O'Connor, and we ate at his house. <laughs> um, it says Best by August 4th, 2019. And it says on the bottom of the can, hey, wait, I've got a complaint. <laughs> I don't know why it says that. Uh, so, and then Michael Komarov has. I'm doing the Firestone Mocha Merlin for the second time. I know Jeremy did it a couple of weeks ago. I'm doing it again. And um, I didn't have another stout to do, so this is the one I'm doing. And um, hopefully it will be as good as it was the first time. I feel bad because we can't get Firestone Walker here. I know. Have you ever been able to get it? No. We get Firestone Walker produced beers that are made for Trader Joe's, but not but none of their None of their original brand. None of their Firestone Walker branded products. Anybody ever had a beer from NOLA? I guess not, huh? I have not. No, no. no. I have not. Never seen one of those. Yeah. I went on a tour there. The owner of NOLA took me on a tour when they first opened. And then, interestingly, he got fired from his own brewery oh, last wow. year. Does yours have a date on it, Jeremy? Mine doesn't. Um, That's what I'm kind of looking for. Maybe it's in the uh, on the bottle where we can't see it. You know, I think they have dates. I think that North Coast does have dates, but it might be one of those situations with black ink on a brown bottle. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I think we're going to have to drink it to find out. That's a clever little trick they do. Yeah. With such a strong beer, 
anything on the matter. That thing, I, I aged one for five years once and did a video and it was dynamite. So mine was canned on the 17th of October of last year. And I didn't mention 5.5 alcohol and 23 IBUs. So at that kind of lower ABV, you'd want to drink it sooner than later. Yes, yes. But I'm, I'm sure it's okay at seven months. I'm, I'm almost positive it's okay. Yeah. So I'm, looking, I'm looking at the way the beer is sitting. I don't know if you see it in the glass. Nice head. Yeah. Oh, so. a little more information about mine real fast. It's 6.8, like I said, and it's 41 IBUs sold year-round. The malts are brown chocolate, dark Munich, extra dark crystal pale, and roasted barley. All of that. The hops are Kent Goldings, Newport, and U.S. Goldings, and this is sold in the can like I'm showing, draft, and also in a half keg and a one-six keg. Jay, what year was Nola Brewing founded? Do you know? I'm pretty sure it was 2008 because the man that started it, Kirk Coco, he was in the Navy. He retired from the Navy. Uh, New Orleans was devastated because of the Katrina in 05. So there was a lot of sort of like available buildings and he rented this warehouse in next to the river and he uh, hired the, the brewmaster from Dixie because you know what happened to Dixie Brewing. Right. That guy needed the job. So um, he figured it was a good opportunity to get a, a new career. And that worked, I guess, until last year. <laughs> But you see, how do you get fired from your own brewery? Well, you know what happens? You hire a, you you have a bunch of investors help you get mm -hmm. it started, right? Right. Well, the investors might own eighty percent of the yeah. of the company, yeah. and if things start to slip, just like at Anheuser Busch, the Bush family did never own the majority of that company. You get pushed out, so the Bush family got pushed out of their own company. Yeah, two thousand. Yeah. It, it was a. Uh, 2008 I'm pretty sure yeah 2008 there's Peter Cadu Peter Cadu from uh, I talked to him he was telling me some interesting things about uh Dixie at the end hmm yeah it's uh it's like any business uh, the amount of uh, percentage of the business you own I mean you can get pushed out pretty easy if you don't have the control you know the majority well, if you're not a sole proprietor and you have to get your investment for your startup, yeah. you put yourself in a lot of jeopardy if you really want this to be your baby and develop it yourself. Yeah, and, and you have to have 51% at least or else you can be pushed out. Right. Yeah, and he, he was the visionary. He started it, and it was the first craft brewery in the city because we have a beta but that's not in new orleans and it was right. a big hit now it was a big hit and everybody sold nola around here cans bottles draft okay so they were running the show but over time more more breweries got started in the city so then he's facing more competition maybe they're doing more adventurous things then he got the idea he's going to start a distillery uh oh mm. down the street at another location and that's a very treacherous business and so you start accumulating more and more debt and maybe the returns aren't coming in like you would hope so they, they just suddenly announced one day last year he's out the distillery is shut down immediately and it had barely got started so they had all this capitalization right all this equipment they bought and it's dead and they've got a new ownership uh leadership at nola so that was pretty big. That was a pretty big shock for Louisiana because he was the face of the company, even though, like Michael was saying, he probably wasn't nearly percentage wise, really, really the owner of the company. Hmm. Like, like the Bush family. I think the Bush family at Anheuser Bush only ever owned like at the most 10 percent of the company. Yeah, that's pretty wild. But when the money was coming in, the investors didn't care, you know. Let them run it. But then when August Bush the fourth took over, mm -hmm. that's when things started to slip and they could see that the, the everywhere around the company was starting to fall. Yeah, the business wasn't doing good. So and then his own father, the former director of the company, is telling the investors, You gotta get rid of my son. He's got to, <laughs> you got to get rid of him. He's incompetent. He doesn't wow. he's, he's hooked on drugs and alcohol. He cannot run this company. 
Whoa. gonna be the next Schlitz. That's when they really launched a conspiracy against him and booted him out to save the company. And of course, he's so angry at his father now. August Bush, the fourth, won't even talk to his father. He, but what, what 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 could they do? He's showing up at a board meeting, and they had to pull him off the state off the podium because he was talking incoherent and mm. loaded off it. You know, loaded off his keister, and they said, "Oh, this has got to end." Well, anyway, nobody joins South Sunday to hear that. But those kind of things are kind of interesting. Yes, they are. Yeah, there's a movie called <laughs> Beer Wars. I, they touch a little bit on that. Like the, as far as a, that information. Yeah, uh, and a lot of people uh, don't realize that Miller was not an independent company since 1966. Another, in, and then we'll get to the stuff. Another interesting story: Miller, uh, the Miller family owned it. The lady who inherited it inherited it was a strict, like fundamentalist Christian who was extremely anti-alcohol. <laughs> Not a good combination for a beer company. <laughs> she said, I don't like running this. It's dirty money in her mind. So she sold it in 66 to a, like a private equity uh, firm. And they, they took it and flipped it three years later and began to sell it to a company that really did fit the business, which was Philip Morris. So in 1970, they completed the deal. So Miller became a subsidiary of Philip Morris. Well, what goes better than cigarettes and beer? And then they continued to be the major stockholder until only October 2016, when they sold the entire company to Anheuser-Busch InBev, who immediately turned around the next day and sold it in entirety to Molson Coors. That's the history there. So hmm. that must have been that must have been in the works. The minute they signed the paperwork, or before even they signed the paperwork, Anheuser Busch for that sale to happen that quick. That they were going to flip it to Miller Coors. Yeah. Yes. Well, the story there is that they knew the U.S. government was not going to let Anheuser Busch and Bev own Anheuser Busch and Miller. Mm, yeah. You know, because then they cornered the market. They got the majority. So. Yeah. They 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 go into antitrust prop prop. Right. But the real reason was Anheuser-Busch never cared about owning Miller. They wanted their African beer brands because Miller, SAB, South African breweries, Miller, SAB owned practically 100 percent of the beer brands in Africa, which was pretty much huge untapped market. Hmm. Anheuser-Busch said, that's what we want. We don't care about Miller High Life and all that. Right, right. So. They kept the African beer brands and the Australian ones, and they immediately cast off the ordinary stuff over to uh, Mil Molson Coors. Because Miller Coors already had a joint venture, right? Miller Coors was not a company. It was a joint venture. Yep. So they just, in, in one day, converted it from a joint venture to a fully owned part of Molson Coors. And Molson Coors, by the way, it's a 50-50 combination. It's 50% owned by the Coors family. 50% owned by the Molson family. You can look that up and check me on it if you like to, folks. Hmm. Now we're going to talk about Stouts. Jeremy and the Scout Stout, the Stout Scout today are going to talk about it. <laughs> so a lot, of, a lot of that's hard to say together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The Stout Scout. Well, this is a uh, old Rasputin, nine percent. It poured with a really. I poured it kind of more aggressive than I probably should have. Uh, it had a, like a, well, two finger, three finger head, and then it's dissipated down to like a quarter. And um, like I said, dark, like the, all these stouts are. Can't see through it. Khaki lacing on it too. Good lacing already. Yeah. I don't know if you can see that. I've got bad light. I've got to get a, something. To no, I can see it fine. Your lighting is not as bad as you can believe. Yeah, I believe it's real bad. I need to get some like. No, different background stuff not <laughs> bad. Out the window. but anyway uh let's get a nose on this one and don't worry folks we're gonna read the comments later on we just want to try to we, we got time constraints and whatnot so. okay it's um getting a lot of coffee dark malts again yeah getting a lot of i'm getting some dark fruits like maybe 
raisin smell on this too, actually? I don't know. To me, okay. it's more citrus. Yeah, it's got a little bit of that too, doesn't it? Yeah. All right, I'm going to get a taste on it. Cheers, everybody. Enjoy. Cheers to you. Of course, nobody else can drink because they haven't done theirs yet. <laughs> I've already taken a few sips. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So we can do. I didn't know that was a. I didn't know that. Oh, well, well, this is not, that it, Style Sunday is a, is a get together. It's not really a dictatorship. Oh no, no. I just didn't know the. You know. Okay. You know, whatever you feel, go for it. <laughs> okay, here we go. Yeah, it's got a. It's a little bit thinner body than a lot of like the KBS and all that for sure. Uh, and I'm still getting that raisiny type big raisin. That's what I'm getting on it. I don't know. I may be totally wrong. There's no right or wrong. You get what you yeah, get. Definitely getting the coffee. It's not quite as sweet as a lot of them that I like, but it's very well blended. It's, it could be a little bit sweeter for me. It may knock it a little bit, but anyway. Yeah. Cheers. Can you taste the nine percent? Um, not really. It's matched pretty well. I, the one I keep going back to, the worst one I've had as far as a, the booziness, is that even more juice from Evil Twin. That that one was like real boozy tasting. I don't know if I just got a bad one or what. Uh. Maybe I had a higher ABV than <laughs> normal on that one. <laughs> I mean, that one, is, was, that one is 12, so it is it is an action number. But Yeah, but I mean, the KBS, to me, the KBS was just... Uh, and that's more. That's 12.2. And, yeah, and, that, and that KBS never seems strong, does it? It seemed like they got the no. wrong ABV listed. It's yeah. almost like the ABV doesn't match what they claim it has. And this this is right, right in line with the KBS as far as the booziness. It's hardly any. It's mass real well, so really, really, real, really, really, really good, really good beer. So, may sit here what you guys say about your. All right, well, whiskey scout, stout scout. Oh, he's got the same one. Yep. Yeah. He's yeah. Give you his thoughts now. It's toast. It's uh, and it's maintained that little bit quarter inch head. Mm -hmm. Once it fell to that, it's just stayed right there. Uh, definitely toasted. The toasted grains, you get that very well in this. I get a little bit of the coffee. I get a little, and this is on the nose. I get some bitter chocolate with like an almost orange citrus oil, hmm. like out of the pith, more out of the pith than the uh, than yeah. the orange itself. Yeah, uh, I can see that. I can see that. And that that's on the nose. Citrus Let's go for the oil. palate. That's amazing. Citrus oil. I can't believe it. <laughs> citrus oil. Well, no, I, mean, I never would have. I never. If he's saying he's picking it up, you got to call. I always tell him you got to call it. But it's just something I wouldn't have expected. You see, yeah. The bitterness is well under control. It's not very sweet. Yeah, no, it's not sweet. It's still got that citrus note to it, though. Even in there, that toasted chocolate. The coffee note to me isn't very strong. It's got more of a slight bitter chocolate with that. With that. Yeah. Uh, citrus note in it and that might be and i could see the raisins now that you say that i know i wouldn't have probably got it otherwise i'll be honest but the raisin note does kind of come through now that i'm looking for it yeah but the only thing i get over what you get is just like i said that more a little more cho bitter chocolate with that citrus note that's yeah yeah and I get that in some, and occasionally I get that in uh, some bourbon, some scotches, not very often, but there is an occasion where it really is mostly on scotches where you'll note that. And I get that on this. Clearly get it on this. In fact, now it's even, even in the longer it's staying in my system, the more, the more it's there. Mm. Wow. I like it. I do too. It's just if it was a little bit more sweeter on my side, it would be. Yeah, right. it's it's still great. Yes. Oh yeah. I'll give y'all my assessment of the Irish Channel Stout. 
Oh, you can see it's got the ring of foam, the lacing. You can probably see that cola like brown at the top where the sunlight's right, right. coming in. And because they did, it's starting to get sunny now that the bad rain is over. And then it gets darker as you go deeper into the ocean of, of stout. Now, the aroma is, uh, well, okay, I'm going to go fast. It's very faint, which is surprising, but it's it's kind of faint. Uh, you get some light uh, a, a nose, a light nose of uh, some roasted malt, which is not light, but you don't pick up a lot of it in the nose. It was pleasant. It is pleasant. There's nothing off or strange about it. Down the taste. Oh, and by the way, this was two dollars and twenty nine cents for the can. You buy a Ooh. you buy a four pack. They run about about eight ninety nine. Um, pretty heavily roasted barley malts, almost into the char, or you could say burnt, which I always look at as a flaw. Um. Coffee, oh, oh, maybe so. Chocolate, not necessarily, really. Um, just the malts like you get with Whoppers, you know, those malted milk balls type things. Um, yeah. The body is uh, <clears throat> medium. Medium. It's not heavy. A lot of people get the perception that stouts are very heavy, but that isn't usually the case. And the finish is medium dry um maybe it's sort of a dry stout uh but that's it it's you, you can tell by that description it's sort of basic uh but um that's that now michael's going to give us his description now, i gave mine kind of an aggressive pour too and i think if you look on the side of my back you saw what happened to the lace on the top wow and yeah and those cola notes are coming through also What's left is the same kind of thing that Robert and Jeremy have, just a small, very small um, yeah. mocha, kind of mocha beige head that's still sitting there. But I'm getting nice retention if you move the glass, which is nice. So it is holding up. I mean, it's seven months old. It's holding up okay. The yeah. color is dark brown, mm -hmm. as typical for a, for a stout. Let me give it a nose. Um, kind of a nutty vanilla kind of smell. By the way, this is a chocolate and coffee infused milk stout, is what they're officially calling it. So we are. So I've got chocolate and coffee. You've got chocolate and coffee. And but I don't think that's the. These are just imperials. Yeah, just super strong. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna give it. I've I've been sipping on it, but I will give it a heavier. Okay, Mike. Okay. Okay, it's coffee, coffee, coffee. So the, the upfront taste is coffee. The chocolate is more of a background taste than a lead taste in this. But you can, if you know it's there, you can taste it. And it is there. Um, it has kind of a lactose sweetness. Let's see. They don't say what, mm. they don't say whether there's lactose in this, but it has that kind of. You've had stouts with that lactose in it. Yeah. It has that kind of feel to it. Um, Jeremy, you did have this one, so you can remember it from a couple of weeks ago. I don't know if you remember the last yeah. part of it or not. It's but, really um, good. But I'm enjoying it. It was it was better to me. It's better uh, balanced than this one, even though I like bitter. But this is, um, I don't know. It's the just a little bit too bitter, kind of. The carbonation on this is also very nice. I find in in this type milk stout that if the carbonation is good it makes it much easier to drink it could be a combination of the carbonation and this kind of lactose feel that i'm getting from it which makes it easier to drink but it's only 5.5 percent so it's just a little bit um regular standard stout right right the finish is dry um i like it i'll just mull over it it's it's, it's real good yeah yeah but, yeah the whole the old recipe is 75 IBUs. So that's getting into the yeah. pretty, pretty dang bitter range. I'm still tasting it right now, the bitterness. <laughs> and yeah, I the bitter Ooh. After the first sip, the bitterness has been building. Yeah. Uh, in back of, especially on the sides of my tongue. The more you drink, it kind of more bitter. Yeah. The lacing holds up great on this, though. Yeah. I mean, the I lacing is absolutely interesting. 
I've noticed something about bitter beers, like especially India pale ales. It, it'll be like 75, 80 IBUs. When you take the first couple of sips, you say to yourself, man, this stuff's not even that bitter. But as you drink on it, it'll start to kick in and you say, whoa. <laughs> yep. That's pretty that's, dang better, you know? That's what's happening here for me anyway. Before we get the scores, I want to read some comments. If y'all don't mind. Okay. And I want to give credit to John Neely. He was going to host this, but he had to do some Mother's Day related things. So it's understandable. Mm -hmm. Cheers, John. Cheers, John. Cheers to John. This is only a fill in. My channel is a fill in for this. It's his <laughs> idea style someday. So I can't take credit where it's not due. This is just a substitute channel, y'all. <laughs> SK Reviewer says, morning, y'all. Morning to you. Alex, the beer master, says, hey, Ron, that beer looks pretty good. I had to look for that. Yeah, it is good. Jeremy Vince said, morning, everyone. Corey Butters started going on about all this endless stuff he's going to go on about. Uh, you made your point, Corey. You don't like drinking. Uh, you have a sort of a warped idea about it, I think. But uh, you don't need to tell us 200 times what you told us about 20 times yesterday. So you need to drop it and go and do bother somebody else or do whatever you want. We don't want to keep hearing it. Mm -hmm. um, you get these strange individuals on YouTube and they, they feel like they need to tell you the same thing. I had one guy that wanted to tell me the same thing three times a day for three straight years. And his message was, I don't like your channel. You do a terrible job. Okay, well, you said that. We understand that. We That's your opinion. We don't need to keep hearing it. Tell them to stop watching your channel. Oh, no, no, no. They can't do that. It's like so uh, heroin addicts. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they, uh, I, I always joke about my channel. It comes at you like an affliction, but it leaves you like an addiction. <laughs> they, uh, they, they say, oh, I hate your channel. It stinks and it's rotten and it's trash. But I watch it incessantly. And I, <laughs> I wake up every morning so I could put a thumbs down on it. Well, I mean, that's not really, to me, a sign of mental stability or or uh, psychiatric health. But who am I to determine other people's entertainment? Um, but it does seem deranged. Sounds like masochism is at its best. If you really dislike it, why are you putting yourself through it? I don't know. Right, right. I really don't know. Torture, self-torture. Your channel is so disturbing, but I'm going to watch it incessantly because I want to. I don't think they really dislike it because if you really disliked it that much, you would not be watching it. Thank you. Like the time wasting. Yeah, like the one telling me he didn't like it. And by the way, don't you remember on June 17, 2013, you said the beer was a B plus, but now you're saying it's an A minus. And I said, wow, wow that's really weird because you know way more about my channel than me. And that's... That's, and that's and the thing people, about can't, it. people can't change their feeling from one day to another. <laughs> but and 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 B plus to A minus is not like it's D plus to to a B. I mean, you know, it's come on. Yeah, but that's that's not normal. Like normal people don't do that. Like worry about what people were saying eight years ago and all of this. You know, it's. It's very strange, but you go on the internet, you don't know what's gonna happen. You don't know what kind of people you're gonna run across. Just think of some of the oddball individuals we ran across in our own beer talk. You know, you just don't know, mm -hmm. but you'll find out. <laughs> when, when, they really when they challenge you on the George Washington Bridge to <laughs> Fistica. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know, and that's not even so bad. No, really. that's not bad. Because, that's you know, that's like, oh, well. Yeah. Just a disagreement and, uh, between two people. Yeah, so. and people, some people are hot-tempered. and they say, Why couldn't he do it off the air if he wanted to do I it? Why know. did he have to I do it there? I mean, it didn't I make any sense. And, I, and to be fair, I was not on that night. I saw the tape. I wasn't yeah. on. <laughs> and he, and he, it, was, it was pretty funny. And he's not going to – but he's not really like going to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to watch everything you do. I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you all. You know, it's not like that, you know. Um in fact, he has come to me privately. And, what? Yeah, okay. I don't think I think it was just a disagreement between. I think he thought he was putting digs on himself. I mean, yeah, he was taking but, it. Home. Uh, I'll, that's I'll, between I'll, them. Uh, I was just informed that I was talking too loud. Oh, okay. okay. So far, Audrey has not come out, so I'm doing okay. <laughs> okay, can you still hear me? 
Yes, you can. Okay, I just gotta talk lower. The old Rasputin is good stuff, but a little too bitter for my taste, says John Emile. I prefer the barrel aged version. The barrels mellow it out a bit. I agree, John, way better, says Jeremy. And then John says, I'm drinking one of my mom's Michelob Ultras as a watch, by the way. I'm jealous. And then, 40, <laughs> and then 47 straight says, uh, John Emile never had that version. I'll give it a try. And then Jeremy Vincent says, smiley face. Corey Butter says, what did we all learn today? Oh, oh, that's okay. The Whiskey Scout says, hey, John. And then let me, let me just delete some extraneous, unnecessary filler material. There we go. Delete button. That's the power of the delete. I like you that. See, you can ban people from your channel, but they'll just start 10 more accounts and come back on. So that's what they do. Yeah. I mean, when they're right. But but I mean the thing is, they're working overtime just to. They could be doing something real productive, man. They could be find a cure for cancer, or you know. <laughs> no, why do that when you can just do that? All right. of these scouts, <laughs> John and Ily says all these stouts sound like winners. I wish I could trade in this Nicola Ultra. There's some Hershey's chocolate syrup in the fridge, but I don't think that would mix well. Laughing out loud. <laughs> And then the whiskey, you never know. The whiskey, the whiskey scout says, add Ovaltine, John. Very right. Ovaltine, yes, Ovaltine. I'm gonna let y'all give you scores, then I'm gonna have to get off of here because I think they're they ate a big breakfast and they're trying to rest. <laughs> uh, I think they're making more noise than I am, so I'm good here. I can get loud. Uh, I'm gonna give this. Loud. I'm gonna give this a straight. Up 95. It's really good. 95. Uh, straight up middle A. But uh, it's just a little bit too bitter for me. Um, I actually wish we had some lactose I could pour into this and it would maybe reach that level that I need to be. But no, it's not a bad. It's very, very, very good. If you if you haven't tried it, get your hands on some. Um, I'm impressed, but you got to have the date, guys. I can't figure out the date. So I didn't subtract points because of that. I just think it should be uh I don't I have not found it on this bottle, so so at least Jeremy is more generous than Greg. Greg takes off whole points for not finding the right. Date. Right. I'm gonna <laughs> stick with my ninety five. I'm not subtracting anything, so it is what it is. It's just a little too bitter for me, but uh, it's a really, really good beer. So What about you, Stout Scout, Whiskey Scout? I think he's muted or something. Uh -oh. Robert, are you are you muted? I don't see a I don't see his box. Muted, oh, I'm good. here. Can you hear okay. me now? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I turned the turned the volume off on my mic. I'm sorry because I thought it was coming back through for a minute. Uh, uh, I'm going <laughs> to give it a 96. One more point than Jeremy. I kind of like the bitterness. To a certain point, I mean, it can become over bitter, obviously. And I like things. Some things I like sweet, some things I don't. In this case, the bitterness works well with the other flavors I'm getting. So I'm kind of enjoying that. So 96. Okay. I'm going to go with a, uh, this, go with a 93. Getting Speak up, Ron. Can't because they'll get angry. <laughs> I'm gonna go with a 93. There you go. It's a little too um, char to be too high into the 90s, but still 93 is a very good score. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna give mine a 93 as well. Hmm. Um, that's, a high, that's a high average for these four beers put together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As I drink more stouts, I appreciate the bitterness. If it was with the coffee or chocolate or something, I would probably not give it as high a score. But since there's not a heavy coffee chocolate note in this, it's I think the bitterness really works well with it. Hmm. I got into a, a kind of a verbal conflict with one of the viewers talking about flavoring in beer. Hmm. 
and he got kind of irate and was saying, I, I, he uh, uh, almost interpreted it as I was slamming beers for having flavoring. I said, no, I was just remarking about how amazing it is that almost every new beer that comes out onto the market, whether it's mass produced or craft beer is flavored. That's all I was saying. I didn't say I disliked right. it. All right. I'm not it's slamming it. it. It's just a fact. Yeah, look at all the flavored beers. Everything's flavored. It almost seems, Jay, that people look to argue. It's like they look yes. for a reason to get into a confrontation. And to me, when you're talking about beer, it should be pretty even-tempered stuff. It shouldn't be, you know, battles. People are right. entitled. Know, but their own taste is the way it is. And why do you have to get into a battle kind of thing? Right. On I don't know. Um, it seems like there's a lot of, uh, like, People that are real touchy, you know, in the, I'm not saying it's necessarily in the beer world because you can do pie review videos and maybe people in the pie review world are very touchy and say, well, what did you say about coconut cream pie? Let me tell you something, you know, so. Uh, it's the same way in the whiskey world. People want to, people have mindsets of what they think, what should be what, and in all honesty, like Michael said, some people just want to argue or some people don't want to see past the front of their nose or their own palate. And they're unable to accept somebody else's version of something. Yeah. And they can't. You, you know, I used to belong to a channel on Facebook called Bourbon R. And I got to where I just I got out of the channel because everything I see in other people post, it was just like a bunch of trolls. And it, mm. it was self-defeating. It was really not. It wasn't a positive place to be. I never, yeah. I got to where I didn't enjoy it. But now the guy who runs it, he has, he's affiliated with the supplier that sends out, you can purchase bourbon on. And I purchased this bottle here. I'm not going to say any names because I don't want, you can research it if you want yourself. But this bottle of Wyoming whiskey from Bourbon R. And he does his own barrel picks, and he's a very, as far as taste-wise and as far as the person himself, he himself is very good at bourbon and what he knows and what he enjoys, and I enjoy this bottle. But the other people on the channel make it miserable. And if you can't enjoy what you like, it takes the edge off it for you because you want the people who are on there to give you a different perspective, but you don't want them to be argumentative for the sake of being argumentative. Doesn't make any sense. Yes, I got to take this call. It's my mom, guys. I'm going to mute. Okay. okay, go ahead. This what is Mother's Day. So. Yeah, we're about to get off of this anyway. Um, look, you get people, they're very peculiar. They either want to argue with people, mm -hmm. like Michael saying, for no purpose, or secondly, they, they these one up people got to one up everybody. You know, right. the type. it doesn't matter what you do. They did something better and they got to let everybody know this. You know, I guess they have low self-esteem or something. Like you say, uh, oh man, I had this old Rasputin 9%. They'll say uh, immediately, oh, well, that's not that good, really. Um, I had this stout I bought at this place in uh, in Indiana. It's only 12 produced a year and I got one and I had to talk to somebody and it cost me $73 and it's way better than that trash you're drinking. You know, the, you know these types. And it doesn't matter what you're talking about. It could be rock music. You say, oh, right, I, right. Went to see, I went to see Van Halen and I sat on the fourth row and it was really good. Oh, well, I went to see Van Halen and they all signed my book. And yeah. we drank coffee together and Sammy Hagar told me he admired me. It's like, okay, right. whatever. It doesn't matter what you tell them. They, they've got to one up. And I think a lot of viewers know people like that. I think it's in everything. I think it's in everything. Like in the music, uh, like in the guitar world, uh, is always tube amps, which I love tube amps and I own a lot of tube amps, but some of them, you know, these new modelers, solid state modeling has got so good. It's hard to. Hold on your audio, your audio bugged out for a second. What'd you say? Oh, oh I'm just saying like they had a, um, like solid state versus, uh, tube yeah. amps, but nowadays solid states are so much more advanced and the software and they can pretty much get so close that you can't tell the difference and you'd have these people that can sit there and blind sound test 
and do it live and they they couldn't tell the difference but at the end they're still going to pick the, the two man oh I, I i should have picked that because i should have noticed that you know and it's just a it's another you know like another um where they got it in their head that it's going to be a certain way and it's got to be that way so i, I it's in everything really there's always yeah. people that's got opinions on stuff and it's fine to have an opinion but this idea that you've got to almost like this authoritarian mindset right everyone must agree with me everyone must do what i'm saying everyone must go along with my ideas no everyone doesn't have to go along with your ideas right and you don't have to go with you don't have to say well since they don't agree with me i'll show them i'm going to get revenge i'll show them no you don't have to do that <laughs> as long as everybody's happy in their opinions hey let them have their opinion <laughs> as long as it's not hurting anybody you know yeah but it's um but we're not getting too down about it and i think the group we have developed over the years has kind of attracted people that are easygoing, laid back, and enjoy the hobby without the ac acrimony. Um, right. You notice on alcohol legs, the people that tried to be that type of negative personality, they didn't stay on the group very long. I didn't kick anybody out. They just left because people weren't feeding into that. Hey. You know, they were hey. saying, oh, rah, 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 rah blah 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 about that terrible whiskey or that terrible beer but no one no one responded to them so when people wouldn't take the bait they went off and probably joined some other group to to raise conflicts there you know right hey, right hey ron like you always say buddy it's only just beer you don't need to argue over it even if you argue that's not even bad if you're making some you know you're discussing you don't agree that's fine but what but you're right. I'm saying you don't need to be obsessed about it. People make beer their religion. And that's not good because right. you become like, it becomes like um, something that controls you. You know, it's like, it, it's, uh, you don't run it, it runs you. Mm -hmm. And like this guy that I had to block just now, he'll be back because he'll just start another account. You know, I'm fine. He may be back he, before the stream's over. <laughs> Maybe back before the streams are, but it's like you, that, that it's not working right. It's, it's think, it's, his thinking is awry, if you would say, because you made your point, you told us what you thought. And if you were in a level-headed mindset, you would just make the point and that's it. Right. But no, you're going to keep going and going as though by continuing to say it, it's going to convince us. It isn't going to convince anybody. And in fact, it makes your argument weaker. Because you have to keep saying it 200 times. Mm -hmm. Do I post political things on Facebook sometimes? Sure. Do I insist that people agree? No. Do I think it's going to change a whole lot of minds? It's unlikely. It's just I'm saying here's the article. Read it or ignore it or comment on it. Whatever. Right, right. It, it's, I'm, I'm not like a, a crusader saying I'm going to change the world by making Facebook posts. <laughs> Ron. No, no, it's not going to happen. Um, but you also do it for fun, too, don't you, Ron? If I wasn't doing it for fun, I wouldn't be doing it at all. You got to have fun. Yeah, right. You got to have fun. fun. When it becomes, uh, when the fun is out of it, you might as well just hang it up on any of Oh, if I wake up tomorrow and decide it's no longer fun and I'm not enjoying it, you'll never see this channel operating again. Yeah. And you can't let I'm people, you can't let people get to you the, to that point. It's just, it just, that's kind of, I think a lot of the, the motivation for these people to see if they can break you and make you quit doing what you want to do, you know? Yeah. And I had some people, I used to watch their beer reviews quite a bit. And I said, what happened? You don't do beer reviews anymore. I kept getting negative comments. I couldn't handle it. Uh, who cares? Just I said, man, you can't worry about that. No, <laughs> no. You, you can't let anybody rain on your prey. You got to keep going, man. You got to, if, if it's something you enjoy, I don't care what anybody says. I'm going to keep doing it, you know? And, yep. An even worse thing, Alex and all y'all, is when they have told me in the past, I said, why'd you quit? I like your channel. And I, I'm sorry for talking low, but I don't want to wake these people no up. No problem. That's okay. Go ahead, Ron. I said, I wish you wouldn't have stopped your channel. Well, I didn't get as many subs as I thought I was going to get. And right then I said, you had the wrong game plan getting into this because your your goal was not good. Yeah. 
if your goal is to be a big time guy, no, hit the road. Don't even join. You know, no. we've seen those guys. We see them now. Some of them are still doing it, but you could tell they're phony. Like they don't want to have discussions with you. Like you make a comment on their channel. You'd be lucky if they respond. Mm -hmm. If you respond, it's going to be, oh, thanks, cheers. In other words, I try always interpret that as, hey, buzz off. I don't have time for you. I'm a big time guy. Right, right. I don't have time for you little menial viewer. Yeah, peons. But, yeah, the, <laughs> but the more, the bigger your channel gets, the harder it is to kind of stay ahead of all comments. I'm not that big yet, but... I'm friends with the Scotch Test Dummies here in Wichita, and they have a huge channel. I mean, they got 4,000, 5, I don't know. They got more than that now. However many followers they got. Yeah. And I know Scott personally. He struggles to keep up with comments other than, you know, if I sit there and I, I address, you know, I get 500 comments on a video, you know, after they get 1,000 views. He said, you know, I can't, I will spend all day trying to give everybody a piece of time. Mm -hmm. He said that becomes very hard and very tenuous at times. Yeah. I have a day job. This is not my job. And so sometimes I just give thank you for watching. And I mean, I do that quite right. a bit myself even because a lot of times you don't even know what to reply. Just like I was telling you, Jeremy, when those got when that one guy, he writes a whole review <laughs> on, on a whiskey that I'm not even addressing. <laughs> how, how do you respond to that? I mean, I do something on a bourbon and he gives me a review on scotch in the comments. I'm like, Oh, well, I'm not talking about that. I get, very, I get Robert. He needs his own channel. This right. I know he does, but I get bizarre comments too. Sometimes like that. And sometimes I get, you know, comments that I have to delete. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, I get the, Hey, blankety blank. Why don't you learn to blink and pour a blink and beer? You blink. Ooh. Or, you know, you're not going to, you're just gonna say, you know, you just delete, you just block them, you know, because they're not there for the discussion. No. Right. So if somebody's content to be an idiot, you just yeah. There's nowhere to go positive from that, you know. Right. I, I'm talking about legitimate viewers now. I'm semi-retired. People know that. Right. So I have. A but little, now I have. I have, I have I, myself even left a comment. There's a guy in Kansas City, and he was drinking. I forget what it was, but it was like an Irish whiskey. Does not have any peat in it at all. And he's picking up a peat note and said, telling us all it's peated. So I gently, as gently as I can, I, I do not think that is a peated whiskey. He jumped back down my throat. And so I just don't give him no more comments because, you know, I kind of know a little bit about Excuse whiskey. You know? Yeah. And so, Look, I've had that problem myself. Yeah. yeah. Look, 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 look. There's a way to talk to people and there's a way not to talk to people. I've had people tell me in the past, hey, look, I watched your video and it was very good, but you made a mistake here and I'm going to show you why. And I'll read the comment. And in the past, I've said, you know what? You're right. I was wrong. And next time I do a video on that, I'm going to address it. Yeah. Fine. Right. Okay? That's different. That's different from somebody saying, Hey, moron! <laughs> you know, yeah. you don't you don't entertain that, you know, because yeah. if they wouldn't go into a barroom and tell you that, no, they no, might, they, they might if they're bigger than you, you know, these kind of not things. even then. I'm a very <laughs> angry person, so you know, you don't. When I was a teacher in high school, I had students tell me before, "You're wrong," and I'm gonna tell you why. It depended on the tone they used and how they said it. But exactly. if they just, I, I might have said, wait a minute, I'm not wrong. Well, yeah, you are. And I said, let me show you why. And I've had where I showed them. Da, 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 da. And then they said, oh, I didn't realize that. I said, right. I said, I wasn't wrong, but you thought I was wrong. Now you realize I was right, right? Uh, and they say, yeah. Now, on a very rare occasion, I was wrong. And I admitted it. I'll always admit it. Yeah. And I've had people I've told them that on their channel and they said, Oh yeah, I did. I, I, you, you're right. I'm going to correct that in my notes below. And then you get the other ones. Exactly. Like Chad's beer reviews. I can say that now. Cause you he said he's out. He's out. <laughs> he said one time I said, uh, 
he said, now today I'm going to review this trash beer. Mm. And I told him, I said, I don't really think that's a good idea to say you're going to review a trash beer and you admit you've never had it before. I said, because you're passing judgment on the beer and you've never even tried it. And then he made a comment. I'm sure Ronald would talk about how gourmet it is. Mm. Well, I didn't take offense to that. I kind of thought that was kind of comical, you know. But I said, um, well, his response was extremely hostile. And he told me, I'm not even going to repeat it because it doesn't really fit my channel's quality guidelines. But I said, that's an example to me of a bad reviewer. Because first of all, you can't take constructive criticism. And secondly, yeah. and secondly, you're judging a beer before you've ever tasted it. Hey, maybe it is trash, but call it trash after you've tried it. Don't call mm -hmm. it trash before you've ever sampled it. And a lot of these viewers, a lot of these channels, they'll do those <laughs> reviews where they're just trying to score laugh points with people. Uh, you know, they're going to review a beer. I said, what you just did was not a review. I'm afraid it was a slam video. I call those slam videos where you're, you're just ripping on a beer to score points with the game, you know. Mm. And I, I don't go for that. I try to give fair reviews to everything, whether it's mm. the Takabaka I did yesterday. And I knew what I was dealing with with that. I'm not a, an idiot. With the stouts today, or it could be the, the rum this evening. I'm going to try to be fair with it. Why shouldn't I be fair? What's the point of doing a slam right. video? I mean, yeah. you know, what's the point? I don't what's understand the, game? the point. What's the game, bro? Yeah. Jay, Jay, it's interesting that you brought up Chad because when Bumpy was doing his 50-point system, that was Chad's last system he did before he went off. He was reviewing on that same 50-point system that Bumpy used on the KBS review. He'd come right. on and he'd read out of a book all the different points and why he's doing it. That's at the end. He's since off the air, but you, his reviews are still on. You can still go on to review. I, 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 watched, I watched almost every one of those videos, and I thought it was a very sensible approach and i thought chad chad had enemies that used to go after him unfairly also mm. some of the same people that stalked my channel stalked him and i didn't think that was good but i thought chad his problem was that he he was knowledgeable and i always thought he did good reviews but he was very prickly in the sense that he just could not tolerate any kind of disagreement or criticism Mm. And I talked to people privately that used to hang out with him and they said it, it was he was difficult. Like this one guy, he doesn't do beer reviews anymore. I used to love his reviews with the popcorn machine in the back. He said, um, well, we did a video one time where we were drinking pretty good amount of stuff, you know. And we said silly stuff, you know, how you'll do if the ABV gets into your system too much. He said, but there was really nothing to it. It was just typical slop talk. So the, he came to the guy and said, I want you to delete that video. He said, why is that? It doesn't look good for my channel. It's not going to help me build my channel. And he said, wait a minute. You know, I mean, you're doing beer reviews. And then we, we did a drinking session where we got a little exuberant and off hand. He said, I'm not deleting that video. And then he said, well, don't talk to me anymore. And he, he said, the guy took him off of Facebook and never talked to him again. I said, that's not good. Wow. And then Chad had Chad dropped me off Facebook because we got an argument over a political candidate. And I said, well, why, why would you get so angry over a political candidate? But, you know, that's just the way he was, I guess. Yeah. Sometimes people can't take criticism. And uh, that's one thing that um, can hold people back because most of the time, well, a lot of times criticism will help you to improve yourself, you know. Yes, you've got to listen to it in an objective manner. If yeah, you, you you can't, and and not all criticism is correct either. No, 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 no. Evaluate it for what it is, and if it's something that is appropriate on, yeah. and understandable that you can objectively look at and say, yeah, there is some validity to this. That's what can help you improve the criticism that. I'm just better than you or my taste buds are better than yours or you're just a damn idiot or whatever. Right, right. That becomes, that's onerous. And that, that has no purpose. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's constructive, you know. And, right. And, right. I have no, and I'm not bringing him up because I have personal animosity towards him or I'm angry. I'm just using that example. In fact, I always liked right. him. I always liked him and I tried to be friends with him, but you, 
you couldn't get too close to him. But some people are that way. That's just a personality type. They're kind of standoffish. You can't change your personality. That's not going to happen. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect him to do that. But, um, hey, I might get off quickly. I hear my wife stirring. Yeah, yeah I, I got an hour and a 15 minutes to be on the west side of Wichita, my mom. So I got to get crazy. Okay. All right. Well, good fun, guys. Um, I'll Love you guys. See you later. Look for who's going to do it on Wednesday. Jay, has Eric said anything yet? Haven't heard a word, but I'll do it if he's not gone. Okay. I know John's going to be in on it. Yes. Any last comments, anyone? We had a nice little discussion. It was, it was really uh, good. I'll see you guys on Wednesday. Everybody enjoy. Take care, Michael. I'll see you, man. Have a good, time, Have a good man. week, everybody. You too. Bye-bye. Hey, Ron, Great. do you ever see your friend Chad or he's done with you? Oh, well, I think he's he, – I think he's – split with the whole program you know what i'm saying oh, it's oh. not me i mean not that he was exactly in my fan club but it's just he just kind of got out the whole beer review business oh he had already he had quit twice you know he got disillusioned early on and was saying i'm gonna quit i'm gonna retire from doing videos and and of course the people that didn't like him said i knew it i knew it Blah blah blah, and he'll be back. He's a no. He's a so and so, and all that. And then he came back, and so they said, "Look, he's back." Blah blah blah, and it was all that. Mm. I didn't care. I used to watch his videos. I always liked them. And then, um, then finally, he got. You could see he was getting discouraged, and then he was saying, uh, oh, "I'm sick of doing this." You know, all oh, it's just the same little thing. Oh, it's just beer, and you're talking about it. It's like, uh, kind of like you're saying a hamster in a cage. You're just going round and round. You're not getting anywhere. Well, he's true. That's true. You don't really accomplish anything. No, I mean, you got to do it for the enjoyment of it. You know? Just doing it. There's no great goal. So then he he just said, I'm quits. I'm out. And I think if you get on here to do beer reviews or, or in my case, beer, liquor, and wine, and you think there's some great goal, right? you're right. going to get disillusioned pretty quick because there's no mm. great goal. And it's not important. And you're and not you accomplishing have, much. What? And you have to have thick skin, like you said before, as well, Ron. Oh yeah. You've said this multiple times. You have to have thick skin to do these videos. You do. I do have thick skin now. Oh yeah, you do. I'm just saying, anybody. I'm. I know you do. <laughs> I don't like. Here's one complaint I've had over the years. You get people that are, they meet you, they do beer, whatever. They want to hang out. Let's hang out. Let's be friends. Let's be buddies. I say, okay. And they're all gung-ho about it. Let's be friends on Facebook. That was a big mistake early on because I don't know these people, and I, I didn't understand Facebook. I didn't understand social media. I don't understand how that works. So they were saying, let's be friends, you know. I, okay. I don't know these people. I'm, I don't really know Jeremy. I don't know you. Right. Yeah. Well, we have a common interest. You know. Okay. So that's our contact point. Call it. So, you know, I'm saying, oh yeah, that's nice. You got a car. But it would almost be like flipping through the phone book and picking people at random and saying, oh, I see you got a new car. That's wonderful. Oh yeah, your son graduated from eighth grade. That's great. All right. I'm sorry your uncle died, you know, it was, but it's, it's, it's like an abnormal world. Like, you don't do that with people you don't know, right? You, know, like, you don't go to the grocery store and just decide to make friends with ran random people. So, hey, hey, Ron, if you want to keep talking, do you want to go off air? Because you don't want to keep this stuff Sunday, keep going and going, you know? No, we're about to cut it off in about three or four minutes. Okay, go ahead, Ron. Sorry. So, um, but anyway, a lot of the viewers like all that extraneous yeah. talk anyway. So, okay. um, but then I run into problems where, you know, they're just like chummy, 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 and let's do this, let's talk about that, let's talk about this, and I'm like, okay, okay, all right. And then it, they'll all of a sudden start acting funny, you know, and they don't want to talk, and you don't hear from them, and I was like, what are you? I thought we were like these big buddies, you know? Oh well, uh, oh, uh, uh, you made some political comment. I was like, are you serious? <laughs> It's like, why would you care? I mean, I, I maybe I have a weird way of thinking, but I never cared what people's political ideas were. I swear, I never cared. I figured people wouldn't agree on that anyway. And so I thought to myself, I can't understand that. 
right, you met right. somebody and you were interested in beer together and you hung out and did beer talk and then you found out they had some political ideas that you didn't you didn't agree with <laughs> so you're not going to be their friends anymore that That's is right. strange yeah. and i never could understand that and and but I didn't care what their religion was. I didn't care what their political or social or cultural ideas were. Or I didn't care what their lifestyle was or who they, what kind of house arrangements they had. So that was things that bothered me a lot because, um, but that's why in the past few years, I've been kind of like standoffish a little bit because I'm like, well, we can, like people will tell me, oh, I want to send you all kind of beer. I got a problem with that too, because I can buy beer, you know, at the store, I don't really need people sending me beer. And then a like few times this, they sent it, and it was almost like they were waiting for a rep, a payback. Hmm. Like they thought I was going to send them something. Hmm. Well, like said, you, like you said, Ron, um, if, if they send you beer, you get the beer again a week or month later anyway. So it's not even worth them. Yeah, I had people tell me you'll never get this beer, and then a week later it's in the store. So I thought you said I'd never get it. What? Their distribution changed. I didn't know that. Well, I told you, don't send it to me. But right. you insisted. You insisted. And people will tell me sometimes, send me beer, send me beer. I said, I'm not sending you beer. Um, Gabriel always tells me that. When are you going to send me beer? I said, I'm not sending you any beer. Send you beer. <laughs> that's a big, I mean, I have no, you got to go pack it up. You got to go send it off somewhere. I'm not doing all that. Um, you're not going to run out of beer in your own town to review. No, I don't think that's a good idea. You just got to chase everything. I got to try every brand. I got to try every brand. No, you don't. There's enough. There's enough to any of us. I mean, local, even locally, we could stay busy trying different styles and different type of beer. Yeah, so. and it's just a hobby to me. It's not a religion. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. This is just for fun. And and that's the truth. Beer is not mm -hmm. religion. It beer is for fun, and that's it. Come on, I mean that's what people need to learn. <laughs> that's the gospel I'm preaching. You know, <laughs> it, ain't, it ain't a religion. And if if you're getting angry at people over beverages, that might be a sign of something you might want to work on. Okay, an angry Let's, issue, like angry issues, kind of. Yeah, because like it's probably it's probably deeper than you're angry over beer. It's probably some kind of, you know, there's probably an underlying issue going on. Because you probably get angry about a lot of stuff, not just some beer. Mm -hmm. Let's see the comments. Oh, heck. I'll read a few, and then we're getting off. The Gary Sharon Van Halen, how would you rate those years? Well, Jean, I never listened to it at all, so I can't rate them. Sammy is the best in Diamond Dave. Oh, well, I would say Dave. Dave Lee Roth was the quintessential Van Halen. I think Sammy Hagar tried his best. And when I went to see him, it was fine, but it wasn't Van Halen. When I was at the concert, I was shaking my head thinking, this is not Van Halen. You know, it was like the outsiders. I said, that's not Pony Boy. But it was fine. And plus the tickets were cheap. We got to sit on the fourth floor. Tommy Carroll said, good morning, everyone. Jean-Pierre said, oh, well, let's not even go there. Um, good morning, Tommy. And then uh, Ruben Mendez says, hey, Ron. Hey, Ruben. Johnny Lewis said, I'm enjoying this discussion. Me too. Jeremy said, me too. Those were the BJCP guidelines to rating beer. Michael Bumpy was trying to be all official. Personally, I still prefer a 100-point scale. But, of course, a 50-point, all you got to do is convert it by doubling it. Right. If somebody yep. gives it a 44 out of 50, okay, well, it's an 88. Yep. I've had some people tell me I was wrong. They were saying, I didn't say it was an 88. I said it was a 4.4. I was like, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> well, how does that? That's the I, only logical way to do it, though. I mean, you gotta, never mind. You're right. Once they, said, once they said that, I just gave up and went on. John and Neely says, Yes, social media is weird. Pseudo friendships don't appeal to me. I have people who request to be my friend who I've literally never met or heard before. It's very strange. Yeah. And then I John and Neely says, Like Ron said, you wouldn't walk up to a stranger in real life and request to be their friend. Well, most people wouldn't. Jeremy said, I don't let anyone be a friend on Facebook unless I get to know them really well. Yeah, yeah. that's the best that's the best idea because man oh man oh. I ran across some real crackpots. Yep. And people might say you're a crackpot. No, I'm not a crackpot because um 
or maybe I used to because I didn't, but I didn't understand social media. And if you read the history of social media, it was kind of an insidious thing to start with. It was designed to be like a psychological manipulation structure mm. where they study what would entice people psychologically to be engaged in their media platform so they could sell advertising. Right. And if people are not aware of the psychological manipulation, then they're easily, well, manipulated. But once you get an insight on what's happening, you can say, oh, no, no, they're not running my mind. You know, they're not going to control my mind. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use it, but I'm not going to be controlled by it. No, thanks. Exactly. So, um, it's, uh, well, you still have the ultimate decision. I mean. But I see people walk around all day long looking at that phone all day. And you know they're just obsessed with this social media stuff, and it's like sad. Got to get the likes. Got to get the like. Hey, Ron, I think it would be better if we didn't have social media, even though I wouldn't have to meet you or anything like that. It's, I don't know. It's, it's I would say, no, it's not better. It's just people need to get a handle on it. Mm -hmm. No, I'm so, saying it would be better if we didn't have social media. If we no, didn't. I don't agree with that. I don't, I don't either. Oh. You have to. You have this. It's a it's a tool to interact. It's a tool to interact. Oh, okay. I'm and sorry. Like, I, I like, like social media, but I just some people get a little crazy sometimes too, and I wonder if that's yeah. Well, it might be better for them if they never had it. Right. Uh, <laughs> they don't know how to balance it. They this. It's too it's like much. Gambling. It's like it's like gambling. It controls their life. You know, they're always on there all the time. You know. So. Well, so Scruffy's so the janitor said Scruffy's the janitor said Facebook started as a life log. Yeah, it was like a, a way for people in high school to um, catch up with each other after years. But it turned into this whole mishmash. Nick V said, would love a philosophical conversation about rating beer sometime and how you were a rate of style the first time you tried an expression of the stuff. I think it's a very good idea. And I think one day on a Wednesday night, instead of doing wild card Wednesday, which people are probably getting a little tired of, we could do um a discussion on rating beer. Mm. Mm. That'd be good. That is a good, that's a real good suggestion, Nick. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about that offline. And, and then maybe the next couple of weeks, we could do a video on rating beer because after a while, people are going to get sick of us every Wednesday saying it's wild card Wednesday. Let's look at a bunch of different random beers. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But Ron, <laughs> Ron, what are we going to do when we do a rating beer? We're we going to do just called rating beer and just try different beers. <laughs> I mean, it's no, 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 no. I'm saying have a discussion about rate rating beers. Oh, okay. All right. Well, we're going to get off of here, y'all. So thanks for watching. We're, we're rolling out. It's been fun. I need to and now it's Jeremy. It's a movie. Okay, so happy Mother's Day, folks. Happy Mother's Day. So long.